Hey guys, how's it going? It's Etanius here. Welcome to episode number 36 of this NHL 22 Minnesota Wild franchise mode here in the state of hockey on my channel. If you guys have missed episodes up to this point, head up into that top corner. And if you do enjoy this one, make sure to show your support by dropping a like, subscribing, and hitting notifications all down below. And of course, leave comments in that comment box to possibly get featured and interact with me. So today we get into the 2032 offseason after what was probably the most insane draft I've ever pulled off to be completely honest we look at all of these unsigned players and there are some huge names coming up the system here guys that we can potentially inject into our lineup immediately and guys that are going to make a difference in the near future here so especially these couple of names in here like Zykov, Hornquist, even uh, <clears throat> Zachary Fenton is looking really good too so there's lots of good players in here and we'll see how they grow and develop, and we'll probably be signing a couple of them here. Apart from that, looking at goalies, Antropov and Latipov both need to be signed. Um, we will likely be releasing Nijelkovic and probably Sogard, um, and very likely Samu Pitkinen as well. So there's names there to be moved around, and we are going to be getting into some lineup management here, and of course the re-signing phase. All right, guys, so looking at our current team and the group of players that we have here, I think we're going to end up with a really solid roster over this next season here. Uh, first things first, we have some players we need to re-sign. Not all of them are going to be staying, but most of them are. And it's an interesting group here. So just looking at it, our centers are pretty much set. I do get the feeling that... Um, Brendan Carlson could be playing on our third or fourth line next year. Same kind of deal with Zilkin, um, and that's kind of it for centers. We might sign Oscar Fath just as an extra player if he's not too uh, too expensive. Left wing wise, Boldy will likely slide over, uh, but we've got a really good group there too. We are gonna have to pay McGinn, but that's okay. He's not gonna be super expensive. Left wing or sorry, right wing. We only have uh, Michkov, but that will get set up. Uh, for success and then defensively you know I do think Sheldon Taylor might be our sixth or our seventh man again here but we'll see what happens with that and of course in goal we've got Wallstead and I do think our backup for this upcoming year is going to be Jose Strudwick so that's what we're looking at for a regular team I'm going to get through get to all the expiring players here we've got a bunch of them and we're going to be using the rule of 85 on most of these contracts. All right, so for a $5.15 million contract for Javi Bullen, that is going to round down to a 3.775, so or a 4.37. But it doesn't quite go to 4.375, 4.377, so 4.4. For, for the next four years, it would be a really decent deal for Javi Bullen. Uh, looking at a $2.375 million deal, that's going to be just over $2 million. Uh, 2.025 there for Jermaine McGinn is a really solid deal as well. 1.8 for three years for Brendan Carlson is an insanely good deal. We could get him for 1.55, which again, really, really solid. Um, Oscar Fast, we'll see. I don't think we're going to be able to sign him for that much. Same kind of thing with Leon Koch, which is too bad because he's actually a really good player. He just did not get a ton of, I mean, he did get a ton of play time, but just didn't really develop the way we were hoping. As far as Seth Jenner goes, 2.825 million should be a $2.4 million contract roughly. And hopefully he'll take that. Apart from that, the rest of these guys should be pretty small deals. 1 million bucks here and there isn't going to hurt. 0.975 for Sundin. All right. Um, I think Tepley is going to be... Yeah, we're going to release him. Uh, Sword should be really cheap too. There might be a few other guys that we release, but we'll, we'll get to that once we uh, realize how many more players we need to actually sign here. So, all right. That's... What we're going to do for expiring deals for now, we're going to advance a day and hopefully see some success here, but we also have to offer some big coaching contracts here. This is going to be fun. All right, so we should be able to get Brennan Frank nice and cheap 
Um, he's had an insanely good record, four Stanley Cups, five President's Trophies, and no Jack Adams, uh, which I do find quite funny. But apart from that, uh, Tucker should be nice and cheap. And we do want an AHL head coach here too. They should all resign. As far as scouts go, dear lord, we've got a lot of expiries here. I'm actually going to just turn our sound volume down a little bit more here so you guys don't have to listen to this quite as much as I'm listening to it right now. But, you know, our scouts have been absolutely deadly here. They've landed us some crazy good prospects, and it's making a serious difference. So let's, uh, let's go with that and just see how this group fares. So. We get McGinn, Carlson, Sword, Javi Bulin, Sundin, Crane, Jenner didn't want the contract. That's rough. That's really rough for a guy like Seth Jenner. I was really hoping we would be getting him, but it seems like he doesn't necessarily want that deal anymore. We should be able to get him still, so uh, let's just let's just wait and see. Um apart from that. You know, we've got guys here that we just simply can't afford. Apart from that, let's clear up some goalie spots here. So Sogard, Nijelkovic, and even Pitkinen. Oh, I did not want to do that with Pitkinen. That was rough. That was not at all what I wanted. Okay. Let's offer Pitkinen the one year and then just buy him out immediately. Apart from that, we do have to sign Joshua Lawrence because he... Has not developed the way I was really hoping for him to. He's been good, like he's put up crazy good numbers, but the statistical growth just hasn't followed. So that happens sometimes. Every now and then you get a guy that just does not grow for some reason. So that is exactly what we're looking at there. Ed Friesen's going to be nice and cheap. We should be able to get all those D-men back. Um, I'm going to sign Cam Hickman here. I'm going to release Tepley. I'm going to re-sign Johnson. Um, same with Moran. And then we've got a bunch of other names here, like Schwartz, who I definitely want to sign. These other two, Martinson and Reynolds, I think we will release. We don't really need those left wingers. And then down the middle here, Bryant Scavello is going to get released. He just never turned out, unfortunately. Um, so yeah, 24, sorry, 26, he can go find a new club. We'll sign Terrell Caberlet instead. We'll sign Mark Paris. We'll sign these guys that are actually going to play. Even a guy like Rasmus Asplund, if he's really cheap, we might be able to do a deal. He's not that cheap, so we'll release him. Um, same kind of thing with Oscar Fast there. We might sign him, but we'll just see what happens here over the next couple of days. And of course... We have all of these unsigned players too. So I think, uh, do we want Letty? He was really good. Dustin Letty made huge improvements, but I think we let him play one more year. Hopefully see some really serious growth out of him. And then apart from that, I think Lucas Roussau, is there Roussau? Rasu? I think it's Lucas Rasu is how you say his name. Um, but I think we're going to let him... Um, He's going to be the only rookie that we sign here, and we will let all of these other guys um, gain another year of experience under their belts. So let's do that. Rossau is going to get the contract there with back at you. And I think that's all we're doing here. So let's advance the day. We're going to get Brennan Frank. We get Ken Tucker, and we get Janicki. Perfect. All right. Grigorenko, too. And all right, we get Caberlet, Moran, Rosso. Uh, we don't get Schwartz, so we'll have to make room for him. Uh, we got one goalie there, I think it was Latipov. Then we get Johnson, Friesen, uh, Pitkin. We're going to have to buy out Paris, Antropov, Lawrence. We don't get Hickman or Kasparitis. Okay, so there is some roster room that we still have to create here. And yeah, as far as expiring guys go, there's at least two or three I want to sign. So, with that in mind, let's go over to, first off, the goalies and just clear out Pitkinen. Although, you know, he could potentially be vying for a backup spot. It just doesn't really make sense to hold on to him. I don't think so anyways. So, with all these other expiries here, we will release fast. 
I'll release Koch. Uh, we'll go one year, $3.5 million for Seth Jenner. I can't offer more than that. And then we'll definitely get shorts and probably Casparitis. So that should be enough space. All right, did we get, we did get Seth Jenner. Okay, perfect. And that looks good. All right. So yeah, Cam Hickman will walk, but that's okay. He, he was pretty good, 71 points. Can't fault him for that, but um, other teams can take, take his contract on instead. So let's sim to free agency, just see what's available, if it's worth it to potentially clear up any moves or cap space. We don't have a lot of cap space anyways, so that is very likely not going to be the case. But yeah, let's just see what happens. All right. So Piero Zapotle would make sense. Apart from that, even then, you know, I don't necessarily want to trade him or most of these other guys. I really do like how the team has shaped up here. So yeah, um, I'm, I'm really happy with how it looks. And I think it's more so just a matter now of um, assembling this roster and getting to the next season. Like we've got so many prospects that this team is set for years to come. All right, so looking at free agency here, and there are some big names, Dreisaitl, Matthews, Savoie. Yeah, those are those are pretty big names. You know, Carson Lambos even too. Um, obviously, he would be a sweet defenseman, but there's just no need to really pursue guys like that. I am wondering, are there any guys with decent potential here um, and overall rating that are, you know, available? as unsigned kind of players, and it doesn't really look like it. Truinard maybe could be okay. Gore signed, Passy Koibu, okay. You know, there are some decent names. Tommy Hacken, there's a name I haven't seen in a while. Um, but yeah, just, just nobody that's really, really worth signing. You know, 60 rated Sergei Semenov would be a really nice player. Um, you know, if we were doing like an undrafted series or something like that, but that is not the case. So apart from that, as far as goalies go, obviously, um, Johan Lander, we can't sign. We just don't have roster space. There's a lot of guys, Timo Lajunen even too. It's, yeah. I mean, we could pursue goalies, but we just do not have the cap space to do that, unfortunately. And Jesper Wallstead has been just fine in his career. He's actually pushing a serious amount of wins here throughout his uh, playing career so far with Minnesota. But at the same time, you know, we're not really pressed to improve the goaltending when the team continues to do decently well over the years. So, all right, let's... Uh, Let's just take one more look here at our goaltending. Obviously, Skinner, and it, right now it's Pitkin, and I don't think it's going to be Pitkin in very soon. But uh, but yeah, like Wallstead's got 252 wins at 29 years old. That's pretty impressive. If he can continue to play as well as he has, I think he stands a really good chance at you know actually pushing like maybe not the win record. That's almost 700 with Brodeur, but you know we'll, we might see something special there. So. Anyways, let's sim to the next season. We're not signing any free agents. I'm really happy with how the team is currently looking, and I think it's going to look even better heading into the next year. So guys, just before we actually jump into looking at this team and roster and everything, we're going to look at our goalies and a couple of our other players first. And the first thing I think we're going to go in here and do is add a single X factor to Jose Strudwick. Um, I think it's going to be poke check, like all or nothing just based on his stick saves and things like that. So with that in mind, let's uh, let's get on that. Just give him all or nothing. And then I'm gonna get his equipment set up too. All right, so I just went with some really basic team pads and stuff like that here. Um, he's not gonna be able to wear number one. So I think we're gonna give him number 31. Um, just because then that way, you know, he's got a goalie number. Number one is actually um, retired by Minnesota for, like, best fans, number one fans in the league, which is really cool. That along with number nine. But, uh, yeah, we'll do that for Strudwick for now. Apart from that, um, 
we are going to be looking at a couple of our rookies here. Most of them actually have X-Factors already, or I've put them on. A guy like Tony Marquardt has just turned out to be a fantastic young player here. Um, just grew phenomenally well. So we're going to have him in the team as well as AJ Dominguez. Again, these guys are drafted in the same draft, like three rounds apart, two rounds apart, actually. And uh, yeah, it's looking good here. So with Dominguez, he's a two-way defender. But his best stats are in shot blocking, stick checking, and hitting, um, as well as, you know, strength and shot power. So I think what we're going to go in and do here is we are going to give him a couple different X factors. Oh, not all alone. Okay, so the first thing we're going to give him is shutdown, which I think just makes the most sense. And then apart from that, I think I want to give him stick him up as well, just for now. I do actually kind of like the Sherwood type vibe he's got going here. So we're going to leave that and that's Dominguez. All right, guys. So this is the team we're going to be going with for this upcoming season. It's really good looking chemistry wise. I'm interested to see what guys like Marquardt, Rossau and Cote are going to do together. Um, that should be an interesting line this year. Of course, our defense is just absolutely loaded and I really like where the team's at goaltending wise. I also really like how we're looking. I just need to change Strudwick's number, and then I will show you guys the special teams here. So guys, looking at our special teams this year, and I really like how our units are set up here. We've got some really amazing players all throughout that I think are going to be able to put up a lot of points and power play numbers that are going to look really good for this team. Um, I really like how we've got it set up, and I think it's going to be just fine. As far as four man, we're looking really good there too. Crazy 90 plus unit there on the first one. Um, as far as the PK goes, it's also looking really solid. Lucas Rosau is actually a really nice addition there on the PK. Unfortunately, as a power forward, he's not quite good enough to kill the five on three himself, but that's okay. We still got plus twos on both of those units. And guys like Carlson and Zilkin are really filling in those slots nicely. As far as extras go, four on four, is exactly how you'd expect it same with three on three and yeah this team is in phenomenal shape it's really more just a matter of are we going to be able to consistently win games and win games to the extent where you know we're pushing for that president's trophy again so anyways let's just check out the team ratings and we'll do the full season sim and see how we're looking all right guys so just before we jump into the team overalls i wanted to show you this that um, Vyacheslav Karpatsev here in the upcoming draft is looking like a pretty interesting, um, pretty interesting Russian prospect here. Obviously a franchise number one overall kind of guy, but we'll see how he develops and, you know, kind of scouts out over the year. He obviously is going to be a quick player, either going to be a sniper or a playmaker. I'm going to say probably sniper, which we don't need if he's a playmaker, Sure, a left-wing playmaker would be perfect for this team, but I don't know if we're necessarily going to go after him or anything like that. It's just more a matter of, you know, is he a playmaker or not? So just something to keep an eye on, but this is how our team is looking at the current moment. Um, heading into this season, we're looking at 100 offense, 92 defense, and 82 goaltending. So a really solid team on our hands, and we'll see what they can do uh, throughout this season. So we'll stop up at the halfway point, 41 games, see how we're doing, and then do the second half of the 41 games. All right, guys, so at the halfway point of the season, we're looking at a 27-11-3 record. Not nearly our best start, but 57 points puts us currently looking about, eh, you know, like third, third or fourth. What do we set at? One, two, no, third place. Okay, so they're not bad. Gaspard Lapierre is absolutely killing it this season. 54 points in just 41 games. Michalov's got 53. He's got 34 goals as well. Not a whole lot of assists, but Marco Rossi is on the exact opposite end of that with 44 assists, 42 for Javi Bulin. So those are your um, kind of assist versus sniper guys. But, you know, 24 assists is still not too shabby for Lapierre. Um, Felino also doing well. Lots of guys like our literally, literally our whole top six is over a point per game, and then after that it kind of drops off. So goalie wise, twenty out of thirty for Wallstead. Um, Pitkinen had to step in and play a few, 
and of course Strudwick not really doing that great he's kind of struggling to start here so apart from that the rookies are not adding to this team at all this year unfortunately um yeah it's, it's just not what I was hoping for from the rookies but that happens sometimes so looking at the entire league 62 for Zadina is pretty impressive. He's played a couple more games, but we're obviously we're not going to see an eight-point night out of Lapierre anytime soon. Tabrinkat is looking really good for 35, and same thing for Horvat at 37. Those guys are just killing it. So Lapierre, of course, is amazing too. Reasonin for Boston looks great, and then yeah, Michkov's right up there. As far as goals goes, him and Lapierre are one and two. Not really a question there. And then, yeah, 44 for Rossi, 42 for Happy Pool, and puts them first and third in the league. Most penalty minutes, uh, Rossi's actually, or sorry, that's plus minus. Uh, Rossi's up there. Most penalty minutes, Nathaniel Moy, we've been watching him take penalties for as long as we can remember, really. Um, most shots, Brisson, is any of our guys up there? Not really. Okay, interesting. Best shooting percentage probably goes to Knutson or Robbins there. Paul Yarby's shooting really well too. So yeah, Michkov's in there, obviously. That makes sense. Uh, most game winners. Lapierre with seven. Obviously, Maroshnashenko, another player that, you know, we probably could have held on to, but just, you know, never really fit our team and wasn't worth the 10 million for that. So team's looking good. Um, we just need some slight bit more of consistency and well the draft is kind of looking interesting too here just based on players and what we're looking at this magnus rodin guy looks looks like a real player here um i don't think he's gonna be you know franchise player but we'll keep an eye on him see what he turns out to be apart from that nothing else too too crazy yet there's some decent players or what's looking like is gonna be some decent players but we'll see as the draft develops a little bit further here. So I'll be back with you guys at the end of the season to wrap it up and see how this team is looking. That was a year, oh my goodness. Okay, so this year the Wild put up a 59, 18, and five record, 123 points, and I believe it just secures our spot over the Blue Jackets by one singular point for the President's Trophy. And there you have Matfei Bichkov, 126 point season. Not quite his previous 130, but really close. Like really close there. He didn't get injured, played the whole season through. And yeah, like that's such an insane season. So there you have it. We beat out the Blue Jackets by one singular point, 0 0.6 of a point percentage. And the worst team in the league on the opposite end here is going to get 37 points Seattle. Ooh, 15 wins. That's pretty brutal. So they could definitely use a guy um, like that franchise player coming up in the draft. But we'll see how that plays out eventually. Looking at players and this team, 66 goals for Felino as well. That is ridiculously impressive. 39 for Boldy is also crazy. But look at this, like one, I'm just going to say that's point per game. That is pretty much point per game for Magnus Oduya. He is so close there to an 82-point season. I think he even won the Norris off of like his 72-point season there a few years ago. So anyways, big season from him. But we get one, two, three, four, five, six, pretty much seven guys that are over a point per game on this team this year. The rookies do step it up a bit there, Lucas Roussel. Russu finishes with uh, 43 points, Mark Hort with 35, Kvasha actually had 15, which he only played 33 games, and he was good in those 33 games, so we might have to hold on to him here, hopefully he's not going to request too, too much money, um, but Dominguez was a bit of a disappointment. As far as goalies go, 42 wins for Jasper Wallstead is about as good as it gets, it's not 53, but still, 42 wins is, is definitely up there, it's pushing the record books and it's impressive so 15 for Strudwick you know nothing crazy um the guy that was actually most impressive through a smaller sample size was indeed Samu Pitkinen stopping nine or 94 percent of his shots there so 
yeah, very impressive season. 88 assists for Rossi just leads the team over. Um, I mean, Javi Mullen had 88 points, so it was a bit of a difference there. It was a fairly stark difference. But looking at the entire league here now, as far as points goes, Mavi Michkov is indeed going to lead the league. Jagger Felino finishing second there. Samu Heikinen still puts up a crazy year, 67 goals. Not quite going to be good enough for the Rocket, but we'll see if somebody else just scored a ridiculous amount. Doesn't really look like it. 99 for Lapierre was pretty impressive too, so yeah, a uh, very good year there. Chandler Gerrard, oh my god, this guy, I knew this guy was going to be good. We didn't end up drafting him, but my goodness, has he ever turned into a player. Yeah, nice pick by Winnipeg there, but... Um, as far as assists goes, Rossi does just beat out Bullbrook for the league lead. Um, Draper's up there too, and yeah, lots of good players there. As far as goals goes, Michkov just beats out Heikinen, who missed a couple games. He might have actually caught Michkov if he got to play a couple more, not points-wise, but just goals. And yeah, Marosh Nishanko up there too, Bordalo, Lapierre in that mix, but not quite at the top. And your best plus minus among all players is Marco Rossi with a plus 64 rating. Most penalty minutes, Nathaniel Moy. Most shots taken, Matthew Nyes. Uh, best shooting percentage would probably go to... Uh, Stenland's too small point percentage, uh, so probably Schumacher, who looks, yeah, deadly sniper there, actually, even though he's a power forward. DeBrusque shot really well, too, at 36. That's crazy. And most game winners goes to Maroshnashenko. Michkov just gets beat out there. Most power play goals. Cider. Points. Connor Bedard. Wow. 37 power play points is pretty insane. Most shorties. Heikinen. Heikinen's on the PK as a sniper. Interesting. Most points. Bystead. None of our guys are in there. Most time on ice goes to defensemen usually. Yeah, that makes sense. And... Best face-off percentage in the league. Um, none of these guys really. I would say, actually, Weirkoch. He was actually surprisingly good as a winger. So, blocks, Gibbons, Don Gibbons. Oh, wow, yeah, he's a he's a good defender there, too. Takeaways, Heedle, giveaways, Bull Duke. Most fights, 28 fights for Amadio. Oh my goodness. Yeah, that's pretty insane. Okay. And as far as points for defensemen go this year, Oduya is going to lead the league over Heiskanen, as well as Stefan Gabrick. And oh my goodness, Gabrick looks like a legit player too. So yeah, um, very nice looking league here all around. And the Minnesota Wild are on top of it right now. Wallstead isn't even going to win the Vesna. It's going to be Nico Dawes probably there for... Wow, how has Dawes put up such insane numbers? Like, I don't get that. Goes from 7 wins in 17 games to winning 46. That's crazy. Bets, oh my god, he's 78 rated for Dallas. That's... I don't get it. I really don't get it, but... Wallstead's, you know, he, he's pushing that uh, that pace for actually being a historical goalie. I mean, 332 for um, Askarov's pretty insane too, but yeah, okay. Rookies, we're looking at Kim Hedberg this year, looks really good. And apart from that, no other really like top end kind of guys. Obviously, Amadio is one of those uh, big fighter kind of guys. Most goals for rookie. You know, Rossi, who is in there, but that, uh, Shannon Kennedy, yeah, that makes sense. Went first overall. He finished third in scoring, so. Alrighty, there you have it. That is your league. We will be very likely taking on the Colorado Avalanche in the next round, or the first round of the playoffs here, and we've got some revenge to exact here, so that's going to be interesting. Iowa did pretty good, too. Our top scorer was Nicholas Lundin with 76 points. He is 25 now, never really developed quite to be the player that we were expecting. Um, but yeah, we got some really good players in here still. 
and Johnson scored like crazy. Apart from that, not too too much craziness really going on here. Not that much growth, unfortunately, either. And yeah, we'll just have to see what happens here. Ladapov looking pretty good, actually. One four out of five. Didn't get to play all that much, but decent for for the AHL here. All right. And Iowa finished where exactly? Top of their division and fourth place. Okay, not bad. Uh, obviously, Rochester's just insane for some reason, but uh, that's what we're looking at. And finally, to wrap this up, we're going to look at the progress reports and nothing too, too crazy. Rasu looking good and not really a ton of growth throughout the majority of the team, but in the system, Rasmussen, oh my goodness, look at this team. Look at this team. Dear goodness. Yep. Yep. Emiliano Mickelson. 109 points oh my gosh that is just insane 52 in 56 for Rasmussen as a 19 year old pretty crazy Zykov put up 59 points in Russia oh Yuri Zykov is going to be a force as well I'm so looking forward to this oh yeah this is gonna be fun okay apart from that Latipov's looking okay how are we doing just on like overall ratings? I feel like I'm missing a guy here. Um, Nicholson's up to an 80, obviously, but Weston didn't really grow. He's 53 and 57 is okay. Bhutan, same thing, didn't really grow that crazily. Um, where's this defender I'm looking for? Hornquist. He's up to a 74. Okay, yeah, so Hornquist didn't quite get the growth numbers I was hoping for, but. Yeah, 1947 games is okay. It's nothing insane, but it's okay. It's not like Zykov. Like, Oleg Zykov is going to be ridiculous. So, that's going to be good. I'm looking forward to that. And goalie-wise, we're looking okay. Um, our most goalie growth did come from Philip Novak, which is a little bit unfortunate because, you know, I was really hoping we'd see... A little bit more progression than that but doesn't always happen so that's our team that's how we're looking um and we will hopefully be getting back at the colorado avalanche in the next one but that's it for this one if you guys enjoyed make sure to go down below drop a like subscribe hit notifications to show your support as i flip my phone on the ground and of course uh, make sure to leave comments but that's it for me this is etanio signing out and until next time